Hi guys. It is an absolutely, and I mean spectacularly gorgeous day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization out here in this undisclosed swamp here on this collapsing planet on this this over the top beautiful December day it is two weeks before Christmas that would be Friday December 11th and I am Sam Mitchell this is Collapse Chronicles and I need to get ready for the for the uh, grand opening of the Crazy Crane Campground Hip Camp this weekend we're throwing us a Throwing us a party, I guess. So come on down and see me. It's all free this week. I have uh, I put another video up. Anyone who wants to check out what I've been up to since leaving New York, come down and see us. But right now, before before I get into stuffing my face with all of these factory farmed animals, I need to do what I do every Friday, and this is this week's ecological meltdown roundup rant where I simply go over to my email box and look up this week's email from <clears throat> mangabay.com from Rhett Butler and the boys and girls at mangabay.com to see what they have been thinking about while uh, the rest of the country is riveted on uh, the temper tantrum two-year-old in chief. Anyway, we're going to start out as we always, not always, but usually do in Brazil with a question. Asking, a, I love it when uh, Manga Bay asks a question in their headline. The question of this week, is Brazil's biodiverse savanna getting the attention it deserves? And uh, this is, of course, the Cerrado and uh, the Cerrado has been getting uh, attention for years from cattle ranchers, from soy farmers, from loggers, from miners. Uh, I don't know why they're asking the question. I guess the question is yes, and it has been for years, whatever is left of the Cerrado. And next door to Brazil... <coughs> What's going on over in Colombia? Well, the Assassinated Environmentalist of the Week Award goes to Colombian environmental uh, official. Uh, it would be nice if we had his first name, Senor Parra, Colombian environmental official assassinated in Colombia. Yes, uh, this dude, uh, Senor Parra, was the coordinator of the Corporation for the Sustainable Development of the La Macarena Special Management Area. Uh-huh, yes, the uh, Sustainable Development of a rainforest and uh, oh well I guess the unsustainable land grabbers had had enough of him kiss him goodbye okay now we're gonna go back and forth we're gonna go back to Brazil what is the news out of the Amazon rainforest this week planned road to bisect otherwise known as cut in half pristine Biodiverse Brazilian Amazon National Park. Yes, this is the Brazilian Highway 364 uh, is going to slam through 152 kilometers, 100 mile new road through Serra Divisor National Park. Yes, and, on, and then on to the Peruvian border. Of course, it has the backing of the state government and Jair Bolsonaro. Uh, meanwhile, the Brazilian Congress is moving a bill forward to fast-track the highway's approval by degrading the conservation 
status of the national park, which would allow timber harvesting, ranching, agriculture, and mining. Yes. Uh, environmentalists and indigenous communities warn that the road will open up a pristine portion of the Brazilian Amazon, providing access to loggers, cattle ranchers, and land grabbers. Yes, uh, this is one of these indigenous activists, quote, with each day each year that passes, the deforestation advances further, the destruction of humans, not to mention uh, every other species we share the planet with, is relentless. That is exactly what it is. And so each week, you know, Manga Bay has its own YouTube channel. So their YouTube video this week is called Dam Burst. Five years after the mine tailings disaster in Brazil, residents still wait for relief. It has been five years since that catastrophe. Absolutely nothing has been done, of course. All right, it looks like we're just going to stay in Brazil. Uh, you know, Brazil is such a poster child for the rest of the planet. Here is genocide legalized by the state as Brazilians are impacted by mining. Um, you're kidding. Residents of traditional communities near the mouth of the Amazon River say that their livelihoods and their health have been destroyed by an invasion of mining companies, which began back in the 1980s. And, of course, uh, I mean, we have miners not only from Brazil, but from Norway, from Japan, and from France out there. Uh, there you go. According to residents, the government rewarded the companies with subsidies, looked the other way when community lands were appropriated, meaning stolen, and pollution occurred. A string of mining disasters have punctuated the years. And there you go. So, uh, according to this, how men, what percentage of the world's forests have high ecological integrity? Uh, according to this, somewhat hopium fueled, if your answer was 40% of world's forests are labeled high ecological integrity. Of the world's remaining forests, only 40% are still intact with high ecological integrity, according to data from a newly developed index. That's the first of its kind to measure forest conditions on a global scale. Um, is a measure of human impacts on forest. Yep, only 27% are currently in nationally designated protected areas, you know, like that national park we just heard about in Brazil that's getting ready to get obliterated off the map. Um, all right. Uh, Guys, I have a lot to do, so uh, I, I'm only going to get to some of these. What is going on? I'm going to go back to Colombia, looking at the Nukok Maku tribe. What are they looking at this week? Palm oil, coca, meaning cocaine, and gangs close in 
on Colombia's indigenous Nukok Maku. Yeah, satellite and aerial images show the advance of extensive cattle ranching and mechanized agriculture in the rainforest of Colombia's Gavari Department. Uh, law enforcement efforts have not been enough to stop the expansion of illegal palm oil plantations that surround the indigenous rever reservation. Yes. Okay. Uh, we're going, to, not going to touch on the C word in this rant. Okay, what is going on between Sri Lanka and the United Kingdom? Sri Lanka to the UK. Here is your waste back. And there's more to come. Sri Lanka has sent back the first batch of 21 containers of a total of 263 containers of garbage imported from the UK in 2019. Yes, a growing number of countries have begun refusing to accept waste from the West and sending it back. Uh, I'm pretty sure China just announced that, you know, it it just hit 100% or 0% or China. I, I think here in a couple more weeks in January has completely stopped the importation of all waste from outside its borders. Uh, if anybody left on this planet thinks recycling is uh, it, 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 it is a joke, the very term recycling at this point. This stuff is going to end up going to sub-Saharan Africa if it hasn't already. Uh, all right, here's some uh, trash talking about the World Wildlife Federation. I'm not going to get into it. I have been trash talking the World Wildlife Federation for years. Glad to see Rhett Butler joining me. Uh, all right. Gee, I guess we're just going to, this is going to be pretty much the Brazilian or the South American. Wow. Illegal mining sparks malaria outbreak in indigenous territories in Brazil. Huh. I guess this is uh, with all of the mining pits? I don't know. Anyway, malaria outbreaks. Uh, all right. We haven't heard from the palm oil giant Wilmar in a while. What, what is the palm oil giant Wilmar up to in Papua New Guinea this week? Palm oil giant Wilmar is unfazed as watchdogs cry foul over Papua deforestation. Forest monitoring groups have independently flagged the recent cutting down of natural forests uh, for a palm oil concession in Indonesia's uh, region of Papua New Guinea. Yes. Uh, Wilmar's investigation into the reports, you know, the fox guarding the hen house, concluded that the actual deforestation is much smaller than alleged. Yes. And was done by small holder farmers, not by their planet-eating suppliers. The watchdogs dispute this, yes, saying the clear-cutting occurred in areas that should have been off-limits under Wilmar's own stated commitments to sustainable palm oil. For the newcomers to this channel, there is no such thing as sustainable palm oil. Uh, what is going on over in Estonia? 
European Union Renewable Energy Policy Subsidizes Surge in Logging of Estonia's Protected Areas. European Union Renewable Energy Subsidies are fueling a dramatic surge in the logging of protected forest in Estonia. Shut up! European Union Renewable Energy Subsidies are fueling a dramatic surge in the logging of protected forest in Estonia. The Estonian government has so far issued logging permits for 82,000 hectares. That's about 200,000 acres of protected forest. Uh, the equivalent of 115,000 football fields. The uh, Estonian Fund for Nature writes, quote, As a result, intolerable pressure is being exerted on the forest that cover half our country with even protected forest now being clear-cut. Anybody who thought that uh, all of this uh, crap was limited to the tropics. This is, you, you know, that unadulterated horse pucky. This is the United Nations Sustainability Goals, holding up biofuels. We are saving the planet from uh, carbon emissions by cutting down half of Estonia's forest in protected areas. That is the definition of the UN sustainability goals. Anyone uh, believing that biofuels uh, are a way to save the planet needs to watch, what is it, Planet of the Humans. Uh, all right, I don't know if this is good news or bad news. We have a landslide has struck the site of a hydropower plant located in the only known habitat of the critically endangered Tapanuli orangutan. Um, anyway, it's too bad the power plant wasn't already there to be buried under the mud. I think that is called karma. Uh, this is how Norway is saving the rainforest by pumping oil. Uh, more on this Amazon deforestation hitting 12 year high. All right. Uh, so France is saving the planet by rejecting Brazilian soy imports to save the planet. You know, last week I did a story on how France is raping and pillaging French Guiana Amazon rainforest for biofuels, and now this week France is uh, saving the planet and the Amazon rainforest by not buying soy from Brazil. How big is humanity's construction footprint in the oceans? How about 32,000 square kilometers, otherwise known as 12,000 square miles? Uh, conservative estimate, 12,000 square miles of the global seafloor is now covered by human-made structures and this is just beginning and uh, we're gonna have one question to close out we open with a question so now the we're gonna have one story about the C word and then I gotta go can whales and dolphins catch corona panic from wastewater uh, Anyway, the jury is still out whether uh, 
marine mammals can get corona panic from human wastewater. Uh, we shall find out. Anyway, guys, I could go on and on with this, but I think you get it, how doomed we are. I want to thank Rhett Butler and Manga Bay for this week's roundup. Uh, if you enjoyed what uh, Rhett and Manga Bay had to share with you, please give this video a thumbs up and do subscribe to their own YouTube channel and do subscribe to this channel when you're over here and do come see me down here at the new hip camp where we're getting ready to have our grand opening party this weekend so I gotta get out there and celebrate uh, having a hip camp in paradise while I still can. Bye guys.